Welcome back to Dwarves and Dice, today we'll find out the mathematically correct Paladin subclass. We have four subclasses to choose from, Oath of Devotion, Oath of the Ancients, Oath of Vengeance, and Oathbreaker. Let's start off with Oath of the Ancients. Although it's the least interesting for the video, if you like a healing build, this one might be for you. Healing Radiance allows you to heal yourself and all nearby allies for Proficiency Bonus, Paladin Level, and Charisma Modifier. You then regain the same the next turn. This gives you an 11 AoE heal, twice, once per combat. Oath of the Ancients also gives you access to Moonbeam, which is a really strong spell. It's a 2d10 or a 1d10 on a save. It does, however, cost a level 2 spell slot, so therefore you can only get 2 of these a day, or 2 of the combats out of 3 per day. Now let's have a look at the other subclasses, Devotion, Vengeance, and Oathbreaker. Devotion gives you Sacred Weapon, so you can add your Charisma modifier to your attack rolls. Vengeance gives you Vow of Enmity, so you get advantage on your attack rolls. This has been changed in patch 5 or 6 to allow you to do it to all enemies for the combat instead of just one. Oathbreaker gives you Spiteful Suffering, so you get an additional 1d4, plus Charisma modifier damage per turn on a target, and you also get advantage against that target. Use each of these powers once per short rest, and therefore you will get it each combat. Now we can look at damage. The weapon will be taking Everburn Blade, which is a 2d6 plus 1d4 fire, which is 7 plus 2.5. If you don't know where to get this weapon, check the card in the top right hand corner. We take the fighting style of Great Weapon Fighting, which increases the 7 to 8.33, and the 2.5 to 3, so that's 11.33 overall. We get Divine Smite, which is 6 of these a day, that's 2d8 going to 10.5, and 3d8 going to 15.8 because they also benefit from the Great Weapon Fighting. Finally, we've got Great Weapon Master, which grants us plus 10 damage for a minus 25 chance to hit. If you're enjoying this kind of content, hit the like button, it helps share it with other min-maxers. Thank you very much. Now let's look at hit chance and attacks. The enemy's temp AC equals the enemy's base AC, minus the strength mod, proficiency bonus, and any extra effects. The extra effects equal Devotion, which is your Charisma bonus, or your Great Weapon Master's minus 5 to hit. Where we're talking about Great Weapon Master, it also gives you extra attacks, so the total number of attacks equals the number of attacks plus a fudge number, plus the number of attacks plus a fudge number, times the crit chance. The crit chance takes into account that when you crit, you're going to get an extra bonus action attack, and the fudge number is to try and take into account that when you kill something, that you will also get these extra attacks. I've decided that on average you're going to be killing something every other turn, so therefore, 2 out of your 4 turns you're going to get this extra attack, at minimum. Therefore, 2.5 plus 2.5 times your crit chance gives you the 2.625 number of attacks per turn on average. Although this is not exact, it is more close than if I hadn't taken into account using the fudge number. A commenter suggested that you could look at a range of the enemy's ACs to get a rough idea of how much damage you'll be doing against different tankiness of enemies. So, with the enemy's AC on the left hand side going from 10 to 17, so this is a mid game kind of build we're looking at, we've got Devotion, Vengeance and Oathbreaker. So because Devotion gets the extra Charisma, it's above Oathbreaker which doesn't get any bonuses. However, Vengeance is well above the rest because it has advantage. I'll be using these numbers when I go forward and calculate. For the sake of consistency throughout this entire series, I'll be using this table as a guideline. This is an Act 1 build because we're looking at level 5, and we'll get 4 turns per combat with 3 combats per day, a short rest in between each. Finally, your HP is going to be 36, and your AC is going to be 17, with Chainmail plus 1 being bought from Damon once you reach level 4. I just wanted to say sorry for the time in between uploads. I'm getting really busy right now with uni, and I need a little bit more time to sort that out before I can make a lot more videos. But please hit the subscribe button to be notified when I can upload a little bit more often, then it will be a lot more regular. Thank you very much. Now let's move on to the most paladin thing, Smites. Smites per day is going to be 4 small and 2 big, so you've got 4 2d8s and 2 3d8s. This gives you 14d8 per day. So your average damage per smite is going to be the 14d8 divided by 6, so that's 12.3 damage per smite. The smites per combat will be 2, so therefore your damage per combat is going to be 2 times the 12.3 giving you 24.6 damage per combat just from the smites. This isn't taking into account crit, but this will be when I do the full good damage calculation later on. For the race we'll be taking half orc. This is because half orc increases your number of crit die by 1. Therefore for your weapon you're going to be going from a 4d6 to a 5d6 on a crit, that's a plus a quarter. And for Divine Smite, the story is the same, going from 4d8 to 5d8, another plus a quarter. It's interesting that it allows Divine Smite to also get these extra crit dice, and that will really buff our Paladin damage when we crit hard. Now let's look at the damage calculation. So, damage per turn is going to be your Greatsword damage plus the extra quarter from the extra crit, plus the fire damage. Then you take into account the crit chance, and then times it by 2 because of the fact you've crit. Then you add on the Greatsword plus the fire, times the hit chance, this is just for the normal non-crit hit, then you add on additional damage. This is things like an enchantment, although we don't have that here, or anything else like the Great Weapon Master plus 10 that don't get crit added on. Then you times this all by the number of attacks. The only variations here are the hit chance for all three of the subclasses, as mentioned before, the end of turn damage from Oathbreaker getting added on just at the end, and the Hunter's Mark from Vengeance. 
Hunter's Mark is going to be 3.5 damage times the number of attacks, plus 2 per combat. This is because the Divine Smite also adds the extra damage of Hunter's Mark. This is only for Tactician and below however. If you're doing an Honor Mode, the extra DRS does not count and therefore will only be 3.5 times the number of attacks. Now let's jump straight into the results. Instead of going through the calculation bit by bit as I always do, I'm just going to show the results and talk through it because we've got so many more data points than usual. Vengeance comes out clear in front by about 40 damage against Devotion and about 60 damage against Oathbreaker. Of course this tails off towards the end, so it's better to see it as graphs. Vengeance does hold up very strongly against the other two, and the other two are relatively close to each other, but not exactly the same. Oathbreaker has a weaker early start and a stronger late game compared to Devotion, and Devotion is of course the opposite way around. Looking at Vengeance versus Devotion, you can see that there's a power spike in that early AC area of 13 to 15, and then it tails off quite hard at 16 and 17. Vengeance versus Oathbreaker, however, tails off really hard between 15 and 17, but keeps relatively constant between 10 and 14. As mentioned previously, there's a difference between Honor Mode and Tactician and Malone. There's no DRS in Honor Mode, and your Divine Smite does function as a DRS, so this will proc your Hunter's Mark additional times per turn, and that's going to be 6 smites per day going to 6 Hunter's Marks per day. This is what it looks like for Vengeance. They reach a 400 damage against an AC of 10, and just above 300 against an AC of 17. If you can think of ways to buff the DRS and Tactician and below, let me know in the comments below. Or if you've got ways to compensate for it in Honor Mode, also let me know. Now let's look at the damage difference between Tactician and below and Honor Mode. There's only a difference of 22 damage at AC of 10, and 16 damage at an AC of 17. This therefore means you'll be doing more damage in the early game, but you'll actually start tailing off slightly towards the late game. Here are the two Vengeance graphs side by side. It's only Vengeance because it's the only one that differs in Tactician and Honor Mode. As you can see, Tactician is slightly higher, and it might be easier to see using the difference in damage instead of the raw damage. So you've only got 21 all the way down to 16. Thank you very much for watching. Have a wonderful day. Bye bye.